Hey, I'm Brett, and I've been traveling around Australia with my family for the last two years in our 17-foot off-road caravan. When we first bought our van, we were complete rookies in the caravan world, so I know firsthand just how challenging it can be to get your head around what you're going to need before you set off. I've made this video for those of you who are planning to or dreaming of setting off in a caravan and exploring our beautiful country. If you've just picked up your van, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be ready to just get in the van and go. There are a few essential accessories and a few nice to have accessories that you're going to need to pick yourself up before you set off. So I've been for a walk around our caravan and I've pulled out all of the accessories that we have. We're going to have a look at each one of those and I'm going to tell you why we have them and what they're used for. Before we set off, there's no need for you to sit there with a pen and paper. We're going to be going through a lot here, so I've listed all of these items down in the description below, so you can just copy and paste that into your own document, but don't forget to edit it to your own needs, because we all have different wants and needs for our traveling life. Watering accessories. Okay, so we're now outside the caravan. I've been for a walk around and I have piled up all of our accessories. If you're wondering what this is in my hand, it's just a wireless remote that I can trigger the camera on and off with. So I'm going to try and break everything down into um, genres and things that make sense. So we're going to start off with our watering accessories. So we carry two different water quality hoses. So you can get a garden hose or you can get a hose that is specifically a drinking grade hose. So we carry two so that we have the distance to be able to transfer the water from the tap to the caravan. Sometimes you do need a bit of extra distance, so it is a great idea to have two of these. Another thing related to drinking water is a water filter. So we have a BEST water filter. These are the top of the range filters on the market. I think this one cost us about $130. Uh, they are supposed to last three years. We had a cheaper filter to begin with. It lasted about a year before the charcoal in it started spewing out. We've had this one now for about six months. Uh, can't really complain at all. The only downside to these ones that I've found so far is they, uh, they have a lot more things going on inside them. So they will reduce the pressure that's coming out of them. So if you're at a water supply that has a really low supply of water, sometimes you can't use this. It's been very rare that we've had that happen, but it has happened on occasion. The next thing in our watering accessories is a bag of bits and pieces that you need. So, I'm gonna move this one here because it's just there. This is a little adaption that I've set up so that I can just plug the water filter on here and uh, that one would, this end would go into the tap, the other hose would go on this end. Inside this we have a adapter. Don't use your teeth at home kids. Uh, we have a couple of these so that allows us to join the hoses together. The other things that we have in this bag are hose fittings. We have a couple of hose fittings. You get a large and a small size out there and you never know what you're going to find. So we found these ones that have both the smaller size which you can then unscrew to get access to the larger size. We keep a couple of these because inevitably you're going to end up leaving them behind. Uh, but then inevitably you're going to end up finding some as well. So it all kind of balances out. Uh, also in this bag we have one of these. Now these are, I can't think of the name right now, so I'll put it up in text on the thing. But basically these allow the water to flow into your water tanks a lot faster. Uh, it took us probably about four or five months on the road before we found these. Somebody showed us to them, I should say somebody showed them to us and they were brilliant. So we immediately went out and got one of these as well. One of the best things about them is they have an on-off nozzle here as well. So you can plug that in, turn the nozzle off, plug your water supply in, turn it on, you then come to your hose, open it up, start it, let a little bit of water flow out before you then put it into your tank. At least that's the way that we operate. Uh, other accessories that we keep in here, this is a tap screw head Allen key. So often when you go to a water supply, they're not going to have a tap head on it. Um, you pick these up for Bunnings, they're very cheap, they're only like 5 or $10. And that way when you rock up to a water supply and it doesn't have one of those, um, or it doesn't have a handle on it, you can plug this on and do it. I think a lot of councils and thing like, things like that 
put those sort of locks on the water supply so kids don't come along and just turn the hat, taps on and lose all the water. Um, so one of these really handy thing to have. And that would be about it for our accessories bag. The next one, this is my least favorite thing. This is a gray water hose. Um, or affectionately referred to as a stinky slinky. You plug these onto your grey water release on the caravan and that way you can flow off the grey water further away from where you're camping. A lot of caravan parks will have a drain where you're supposed to run your grey water into so this will transfer the water from the caravan to that drain without it going anywhere. I try and avoid using it, I'll only put it out if I really have to because it does get really smelly and wrapping it back up and putting it away uh, inevitably ends up with that stuff on you and that's quite unpleasant. Uh, while we're on the subject, this is in a hose bag. We started out having a hose bag for our hoses as well. In the end, I found them really annoying to be continually putting them into the bag, so we ended up ditching it for the hoses which we use all the time. I still got this one to manage the stinky slinky because we don't use it as often and it is nice to have it managed a little bit better while it's going into storage. Uh, on the subject of bags, it's not really going to have its own title, but wherever you can pick up bags, they are great to have to keep everything organised. We found a lot of ours from Aldi. Uh, they've got this one here. This was also a pickup from Aldi, the old Adventure Ridge. And I've got another kind of canvas bag as well that we put a lot of things in, and we also picked them up from an Aldi special. So in this bag, I've got some things that I need for cleaning the car. Uh, I have a just a garden hose. We can also use this if we are desperate to extend the range of our drinking water. Uh, we try not to, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. Uh, but mostly I will be using this. I'll connect it onto the caravan's tap and then I can wash the car, I can wash the boat and things like that. Uh, as well as a few sponges for washing. And lastly, in our watering accessories is our bladder. So this is a 105 litre expandable bladder. So I lay this out in the back seat of the car and it will fill up and it sits underneath the kids' feet. It gives us the ability to transfer 105 litres of water and this in combination with another water tank on the car that's about 80 litres gives us virtually the ability to fill up the caravan without actually having to move it. In order to transfer that water across, we are currently using a simple little water pump that we picked up from Bunnings that is powered by a drill. Uh, I'll put a little b-roll up of this of what that looks like when it's in action but essentially we just uh, put the drill onto this get the drill rolling and that will then transfer the water from our water bladder and the car's water tank and into the caravan. All right that is all of our watering accessories. Power accessories. Next cab off the rank is our electrical power supply equipment. So we carry two types of cables we have just a standard extension lead. This one I generally use to run from the caravan to the car fridge so that the fridge in the car isn't consuming the batteries while we're sitting stationary. And the second one is an essential piece of caravan equipment that you're going to need to purchase. This one is a 15 amp power lead. So if you didn't know, caravans are supplied from a 15 amp power supply. And that's because the caravan has a whole bunch of equipment that you can be running inside the caravan. For example, you might have the air conditioner running and then you might be running a toaster and an air fryer and boiling the kettle all at the same time. So a standard household power supply, which is 10 amps, isn't gonna be able to provide the caravan with enough power, which is why caravan parks supply all the caravans with a 15 amp power supply. Now, the difference between a standard power supply cable and a <clears throat> caravan power supply or a 15 amp power supply cable is this really big earthing pin down the bottom. Hopefully you'll be able to see that from there. You can see that it's a lot bigger. And the reason why they do that is to prevent you from plugging one of these plugs into a standard household power supply. It's just a bit of a safety net to prevent you from plugging your caravan straight into a house and then overloading the house's system and blowing it all up. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't plug your caravan into a household power supply and run everything, but in order to do that, you will need the third item that we have in our power supply bag, 
which is an adapter. So this one's brand is called Amphibian. There are probably other brands out there, but basically these things have a circuit breaker on board. They have the ability to plug into the larger power supply on it. And then out on the other side here, you plug this guy into a standard 10 amp power supply from a household and you're good to go. So whenever we driveway surf and do things like that, we use this one. It comes in a kind of waterproof box as well. So all the connections don't get wet if you're out in the weather. And as I mentioned before, and talking about bags, these are the other kind of bags that we have. These we picked up from Aldi as well. Good old Aldi sales, the Adventure Ridge brand does a perfectly good job for maintaining all of our equipment in a nice and organized manner. Power tools. The next um, cab off the rank for our equipment that we need for our caravan will be our power tools and our tools. So I chose to go with Ryobi because Bunnings will warranty most of this uh, equipment really good. I can tell you firsthand that our chainsaw blew up after about a year and a half of use. We took that into a Bunnings, um, what, a thousand kilometers away from where we purchased it, purchased it with the receipt. They said, what's wrong? I said, it's not working. They said, here's a new one. And then it was re-warrantied for another seven years. I think it's absolutely ridiculous, but for $180, I have a never ending chainsaw because I fully suspect this won't last another seven years and I will be able to go and replace it and get a new uh, power tool just like that. So Ryobi is a pretty good choice to go if you're on a low budget like us. All right, so this is the first power tool that we have. It is the little electric chainsaw. Absolutely brilliant tool to have. It allows you to go and collect your firewood uh, without having to spend $20 a pop. And it does a fantastic job. I really like this tool. And I would recommend that you get one. Next one in here is a little electric blower. So I use this to get the fire started. I use it to blow all the trash out from the floor on the caravan. Uh, it is just a very versatile and useful little tool. Next thing that we have from Ryobi is a uh, vacuum. This one is a little, a little vacuum system. Mel uses it more than me. I don't have much more to say about it other than it is nice to have a vacuum. We get the kids to go and clean the car out with it because they make an absolute mess in the cars. So the kids use this a lot as well. And they're lower and more nimble, which makes it easier for them to get down and clean the floor in the caravan with this as well. Now, we also have a rattle gun. I use this rattle gun to put the boat together. I use it to put down the stabilizer legs. Uh, it is just an incredibly useful tool to have. It gets used all the time. Next one is a little brushless cordless drill. I also use this one all the time. We have pegs that operate through this little thing here, screw in pegs, they are the bomb. You should definitely be getting those pegs. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. Uh, and you're always doing a lot of handiwork and fixing things while you're on the road and having a drill is just a really handy thing to have. But I also have a few different drill bits. One of the things about living in a caravan is you're constantly needing to fix things. So having a few drill bits is a really good thing to have. On the subject of uh, tools and other bits and pieces, I also have a pretty extensive tool kit. I'll take you over and show that. I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about what tools we actually have. If you're like me and you aren't really a handyman, um, my advice would be to go and have a chat with someone who is a handyman and they can help you figure out what tools you should take on the road. That's exactly what I did in order to build out my toolkit and uh, I'm glad that I have because I use these tools a lot. And then the last of our electric tools that we have is a little soldering iron. I found on several occasions that I have wished that I had a soldering iron so we ended up picking this one up on the road because you are constantly fixing broken things on the road and it's just very handy to have your own little soldering iron. If there was one more tool that I would need to have and wish that I had on sporadic occasions that would be an angle grinder. I suppose the next time we find ourselves in a situation where we need an angle grinder, I might pick one up and add it into our kit. Caravan utilities. I have just brought you guys around to the other side of the caravan to talk about the next thing, which we're gonna title caravan utilities. We have to come around to the other side of the van because I'm currently using some of these utilities and I wasn't able to get them out without moving the van. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about are our leveling ramps. 
We actually only carry the one leveling ram because we're a single axle caravan. You will need a whole different setup for a double or a dual axle caravan. Uh, and I don't have the expertise in that area, so I can't really explain to you how that works. I just have the one leveling ramp that allows me to lift the van up on one side to try and level out the caravan. So how that works is we have the one leveling ramp and then on the other side we have the, um, the locking system or the brace that stops the caravan from rolling forward. So on the caravan leveling ramp there are some teeth and on this one there are some teeth. So once you've got the caravan level you just slot that in like that let the caravan roll a little bit forward, it's all going to lock in place, then the caravan isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, also in our caravan utilities, I've got a jockey wheel base plate. So I don't use it all the time. I'm only going to use it if we're on a bit of a hill or if we're on something soft and I don't want the jockey wheel to uh, seat into the ground. Um, it is a useful thing to have, would definitely recommend having one of those. In our accessories, we also have a hitch lock. So, I don't use this very often. I will only use this if we're leaving our caravan somewhere that I don't feel safe. If we're leaving the caravan on the side of a road to go and explore up a path or something like that, I would put it on. If we're in a free camp and it's giving me a bad vibe, I might put it on. But the majority of the time, I don't really feel like we need it. We've been on the road two years now and we haven't really had any issues. So on the subject of locking our caravan, we also don't have one of those wheel clamps as well. One thing that we do have is a tracking system that we've hidden away in the van. So if somebody were to steal the van, we can hopefully locate it as well. Let's have a bug finder or something like that. And the truth is professionals probably do and will find that. So I don't know, you gotta take your chances, don't you? But that's why we have insurance, isn't it? All right, the next thing that we have is a little bag with a bunch of utilities. So these are called awning tensioners and they are pretty much an essential piece of equipment that you should get. As you might be able to hear today, the wind is getting up. That's why I don't have my um, awning out at the moment and the forecast is for it to get a lot windier. Uh, so a good tip as well for you guys is to pay attention to the weather forecast. That's why my awning is away at the moment because despite um, having these, I don't know how it's gonna handle the winds that are forecast to come in tonight. And even if it does handle it, it makes a bloody racket. So you want to put it away so you can get a good night's sleep. All right. So if you're not going to use an awning tensioner, you can also get something called an anti-flap kit. Because we have a smaller caravan, we found that these little awning tensioners do the job for us. Uh, a bigger caravan will have a bigger awning and a bigger awning is going to pick up the wind a lot better. So you might want to consider investing in something a little bit more serious if you're using a bigger caravan. And lastly, well not quite lastly, second lastly, we have a few tie downs. I can tie the caravan awning down as well, though I find with my small awning, it usually doesn't really need this. And the last thing that we have inside this bag are our little screw pegs. So I keep some of these without anything on it. I've taken the little extra bit off of these and I'll use this one to tie down our mat. And I keep these ones like this so I can screw them into the ground and hook the ropes on to stop the caravan awning from floating away. All right, that is that one taken care of. Let's move on. All right, quickly, before we move on to the next subject, I missed something that should fall into your caravan utilities list, and that would be a step. We have an off-road caravan, so we do not have a step built in. That allows us to have a little bit more ground clearance and when we do go into some of the harder to get into tracks, we're not gonna knock off a set of steps. Caravan comforts. The next one that I wanna talk about with you guys is going to be titled Caravan Comforts. So in our Caravan Comforts, we have things like chairs. Our kids use these little National Geographic lightweight chairs. Uh, they are a lovely little design. They take up hardly any space and they're very light. One of the key things that you want to be thinking about when you're preparing to move into a caravan is keeping everything small and lightweight. The kids don't really need a significant chair. They hardly ever use them anyway. So this is what they have. We have these awesome little Zempire chairs. You can see how small they pack up to. They are a brilliant little compact chair. Uh, we're very happy that we found these. They are probably about half of the size of the old traditional designed chairs and they would be probably 
oh, a quarter to a fifth of the size of some of those really big comfortable chairs that some people carry around. So for us living in a small caravan, finding things like this that pack away really small and don't weigh very much are a really good thing. The other thing that we have in our caravan comforts is our little table. So again, we've got the Zempire table. It's a great little design, it's quite lightweight, it packs down quite small, so it's a really good caravan accessory. One of the things that you probably should consider taking with you when you move into caravan is a ground mat. We have one of these um, quite expensive recycled mats. We actually had this a long time before we moved into the caravan and decided that we were gonna travel Australia. Um, so this one is probably going on about probably seven or eight years old. Does a really good job. Most of the sand will funnel through it and not sit on top. Uh, and I can also blow it off with the blower. That's another good reason why we have that Ryobi blower. And next on the list is some floor mats. So we have the old muck mat. This is what the kids will wipe their feet off on before they come into the van. We also have a secondary one on the step just straight into the caravan. They do a good job of trying to reduce the amount of dirt that gets into the caravan. And the last thing that I'm gonna talk about in our caravan comforts is mosquito repellent. You definitely want to be thinking about how you're gonna be managing those because sometimes you go to places and you can get absolutely destroyed by mosquitoes and by sandflies. So, we have a couple of things. We carry a thermocell and that does a really good job, but this is not our only line of defense. We also carry a load of Bushmans. So this is the 40% stuff, the really good stuff. We'll pull that out. If this isn't doing the job alone, we're definitely gonna be pulling this out. And we also carry some of these sandfly insect burners as well, or mozzie repellent insect burners. So yeah, every line of defense that you can find, I'd suggest you get them because um, those things can make your life absolutely miserable. Internet. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is our internet accessories. So we have very recently just picked up Starlink and it is an absolute game changer. It means that we're now going to be able to get internet in places that we previously would never have been able to find internet before. And for people like us that live and work full time on the road, this thing is just insane. So, this is what Starlink calls Dishy. So I have to pull this out and set this up when we arrive and then I put it away and it just travels on the bed. So it goes in and out as we arrive. Now look, I am not a communications expert and I can't give you any more details about how this works, but we have some good friends at Overland Exposure who have created a few videos about how you can do internet on the road. So I'm just gonna put a link up here to how uh, Starlink works, a video that they created. But on top of this, if you don't have access to the sky, which is going to happen on occasion, in fact, I actually have that happening right now. So we have our backup solution. So again, this one is something that we learned from our friends at Overland Exposure, and they have a video up on how this all works as well. I'll put a link up to that one up here. But basically, this is a directional antenna. I take this antenna and I can put this up on an extension pole that hangs high up in the sky. You can point that at one of the satellite towers and it's going to drastically increase the range that you're going to be able to receive data. So but if you're anything like us and you need internet on the road, you want to be having a look at what your internet solutions are going to be. And a really good place to start is with our friends over at Overland Exposure. Washing accessories. All right. The next thing that we're going to talk about is our washing accessories. So we've got a few things that we use to do all of our washing, our laundry, how we wash the car and things like that. One of those things that I have is these little stackable bunny, bucket, bunny, bu <laughs> one of the things that I have are these little stackable buckets that you get from Bunnings. We've actually get four of these and they're incredibly useful. We stack our laundry in these. We put a fill one of these next to the door when we're in sandy places for the kids to wash their feet off with. They are just very versatile. We also use them in our laundry process. And because we are in a small caravan, we don't have a clothes washing machine. So what we use is something called a scrubber bag. So our process for washing clothes is to put some detergent in this bag along with our clothes and water. We then put the clothes in, we seal this up, 
we shake it all around. Inside here are some little teeth that help get the washing done. We then strain that out a little bit and put it into one of these buckets with some fresh water to rinse off the clothes and then manually wash or drain the clothes. So that is our washing process. We also have a little clothes rack, which we keep in another bag that we've got from Bunnings. So this is just one of these simple little extendable clothes lines. Pretty useful, pretty essential, but sometimes we don't set it up. Sometimes, like for example, as you can see right now, we just use a rope and hang that up somewhere as well if we don't have a lot to hang out. Next, we have a little extendable broom. Really versatile, useful thing to have. That, if I could figure out how to make it work, extends like that. These poles come out like that and we can use that to clean out the mat. If we have the mat lying out, we use it to brush out the dust out of the caravan because sometimes Mel gets mad at me when I use the blower to do that. <laughs> All right, and the last little thing that we have is our little extendable um, brush system for cleaning the car and the caravan. Because the caravan is quite high, so you can't really reach it with a sponge, so this is really useful to get up and wash the top and wash the sides off of the caravan. Vehicle accessories. All right, bring you up around here and we'll talk about one more thing. If you like being on the water, you might want to have something that you can use to get on the water with. We have a rooftop tinny. That's a very extreme way to get on the water. You could get yourself a stand-up paddleboard. We see lots of travelers out with those and they look brilliant. You could get an inflatable kayak. You could get a serious proper kayak. There are lots of ways that you can get on the water. If you like being on the water, you might want to have a think about if you want to include something like that in your kit. Let's go over and have a quick look at the car now. Up here at the front of the car, we have a few things that are essential caravan equipment as well. We've got our driving mirrors. So these are clear view mirrors. They simply slide out and in. You can get ones that you can attach that are a lot cheaper, but as full timers, we didn't see the point in not getting those. The car is locked, so I can't go in. But other than the clear view mirrors, the only other accessory for a car that I would suggest that you get is a radio. We have a CB radio, you tune that to channel 40 when you're driving out in the areas where there are road trains and things like that. That way you can know what's going on with the road trains, they can call you through when you need to overtake. And it also gives you the opportunity to communicate with the other travellers on the road as well. Uh, yeah, pretty silly not to have a CB radio, you should get one if you're planning to do this. Okay, next I'm going to take you for a run through of all the accessories that we have in our car. When you're living in a caravan, your car really becomes a bit of an extension of your living space. So I do think it's appropriate to include the things that we have in our car in this video. So we'll try and do this nice and succinctly. I will just quickly run you through all of the things that we keep in our car. So starting from the front, we have a soda stream, a really versatile, useful tool to have for living in a caravan. It means that you don't have to carry around excess soda bottles and that's going to cut down your weight and it means you can always have a nice fizzy drink if you need one. In behind our fridge is a solar blanket. So that's a 300 watt solar blanket. I can plug that into the car, I can also plug that into the van and that's going to help us gain a little bit more power when we're on the road. Moving along, we have a stand up fridge in the car. Our caravan is quite small and so is our fridge in the caravan. So having this extra fridge is a bit of a game changer for us. We kind of separate our food products into the caravan and we keep all of our drinks in this fridge out here. Next, we have a bit of a pantry, not really a critical piece of equipment. We do have our Ziggy barbecue. A Ziggy or a Weber barbecue is probably a bit of an essential piece of equipment. Uh, we use that crap out of ours, we use it we use it for 50 to 60% of our cooking, so I like having that, I really do. On the subject of cooking, I did drop a few of the accessories out of the caravan down on the floor here because they fell into the same kind of category. So we have a nice big camp oven and we also have our Darchi fire pit. Some of the places that you go will not let you have a fire unless you have it in a raised pit. So having yourself a fire pit, if you like having fires, is pretty useful. We use it a bit, but we don't use it super frequently. I'm going to now bring you around to the other side of the caravan. I should actually start like that so that we can talk about the Max Tracks. 
This is about the only piece of recovery equipment that we have and I wouldn't be without it. It's got us out of a lot of holes. Get yourself a set of recovery tracks, guys. Trust me, you're going to use them. Okay, so in the back, what do we have? We do have some camping equipment. We have used our camping equipment three or four times since we've been on the road in two years. So do you need to have camping equipment? I don't know. Do you need to have two massive swags that you're hardly ever going to use? I'll leave that up to you to decide. We decided to just take some tents. So inside this bag here, we have sleeping bags, little air mattress pillows. We have two tents, one for the adults, one for the kids. We have tiny little hiking mattresses and we've each got a sleeping bag. So that is what we use if we're going to leave the caravan behind. But in my opinion, because you are living on the road and you feel like you're camping all the time anyway, the need to go camping, it doesn't come up that often. So I leave it up to you to decide if you want to include some kind of camping equipment in your kit. Next, we have an additional 33 litre fridge slash freezer. I haven't used it very much. I've only used it twice, but when I have used it, it's been very useful. Often when you go remote, there isn't a lot of food available, so being able to stock up and freeze things in this is a pretty handy thing to have. Full disclosure guys, it's actually the next morning. I was just putting the clips together this morning and realized that I missed a few important things that we keep in our car. So I thought I'd better come back out and shoot these to share them with you. One of those things is a bottle jack. So these are a lot easier to use than the standard jack that comes in a car and they can be rated to a higher weight as well. And caravans can be pretty heavy. So getting a bottle jack that's rated to the weight of your caravan is a pretty good idea. The next thing that I forgot to show is an air compressor. You are often going to be lowering the pressure of your tires when you're doing corrugations and when you're doing soft sand. So the ability to pump those back up is pretty handy and that's why we carry an air compressor. Another thing that we carry for the same reason is a tire deflator and a pressure gauge. I started out with this ARB one and you can see that its maximum pressure rate reading is only 60 PSI. But caravans actually run at a phenomenal pressure, which I didn't know until we got into a caravan. Our tires are supposed to be running at 70 PSI when we are on the bitumen. And so I had to go out and find a special air pressure gauge that read up that high. We ended up with this digital readout one that's supposed to go up to 80 PSI. So you might wanna have a look into what the pressure readings or requirements are gonna be on your tires and make sure that your gauge is gonna to go to the right level. The next thing that I glossed over was a snatch strap. That's one of the other bits of recovery equipment that we carry. Uh, you wanna get a heavy rated one because you might also be snatching yourself and the caravan out at the same time. So it could be incredibly heavy. And then the last thing that we carry in our bag of recovery equipment is a set of jumper leads. You could end up with a flat battery and being able to get your battery jump started is handy. I would really love to get one of those battery packs that can jump start a car so we wouldn't need somebody else to help us. It's not really in the budget for us at the moment, but maybe come tax return, we'll probably be looking at getting one of those as well. Okay, now back over to the intro. I think that really brings us to the end of the essential things that we have in here. We do have a picnic blanket. We use that a bit. Pool noodles. I think that's going to bring us to the end of the video, guys. I hope this has been useful. I hope you've got something out of it. Don't forget, if you would like to just have a list of all the things that we've talked about, I've put it down in the description below. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're enjoying our videos, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.